Oh, hey there. I'm schooling at Alexander the 14th, and today we're going to be looking at the most important court cases in the life of John Marshall. Prior to becoming a Chief Justice for 34 years, John Marshall was the leader to the Federalist Party in Virginia and served in the House of Representatives from the year 1799 to 1800. He later became Secretary of State under President John Adams. His decisions usually advocated for the central government over the state government. Your time is up, my time is now, now. You can't see me, my time is now. At the end of John Adams' presidential term, he appointed Federalist members to the Supreme Court, such as William Marbury. The new president, Thomas Jefferson, ordered James Madison, the Secretary of State, to not deliver commission to these Federalist members. Marbury tried Madison in court. All rise. This court case is now in session. Mr. Marbury, your point first. Thank you, Mr. Marshall. I believe I deserve my commission because John Adams was the person to appoint me to become a member of the Supreme Court, not Thomas Jefferson. So Thomas Jefferson does not have the right to remove me from membership. I also believe that John Adams appointed me because I was the right person for a job, not because I was a federalist. So for those points, I believe I deserve my commission. Thank you. Mr. Madison. I believe that Mr. Marbury does not deserve his commission. This is shown because John Adams appointed him as a federal judge at the end of his presidential term. John Adams was clearly trying to secure the federalist power once he left. You know what? I don't care that you broke your elbow. You know what? Your mom is fat. Pow. Oh! Order, 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 order. I have come to a verdict. Due to the Judiciary Act of 1789, Mr. Marbury does have a right to his commission. However, in Section 13 of the Judiciary Act, Story time. the Supreme Court is authorized to issue writs of mandamus in cases warranted by the principles and usages of law to any courts appointed or persons holding office under the authority of the United States. It gives the Supreme Court more power than the Constitution. Therefore, this act is unconstitutional, and I believe that Mr. Marbury does not have deserve the right to his commission. Mr. Madison has won the case. Court adjourned. This was the first time that a state law was deemed unconstitutional by the Supreme Court. Mr. Marbury, how do you feel after losing this case? Ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine when you're not really fine, but you just can't get into it because they would never understand. Mr. Fletcher, your point first. I, Robert Fletcher, believe I should get a refund for the land that I bought from you, John Peck, because you did not have proper entitlement over the land that you bought under the Yazoo Land Act. Mr. Peck? I, John Peck, legally obtained my land from the Georgia government, unknowing that the Yazoo Land Act would later be repealed, so I should not be the one that's being punished. It should be the Georgia government instead. By the power of my almighty tenderizer, I declare that the Yazoo Land Act of 1795 is unconstitutional. Mr. Fletcher, you are entitled to a refund for your lands, and the Georgia government is at fault. Court adjourned. This was the first time a state law was ruled unconstitutional. Mr. Webster. I, Dan Webster of Dartmouth College, believe that New Hampshire has no right in order to turn Dartmouth College from a private school into a public school. Mr. Woodward. I, William Woodward, representative of New Hampshire, believe that the state of New Hampshire has the right to turn a private school into a public school and to be able to take over that state college. It is unconstitutional for New Hampshire to turn Dartmouth College from a private to a public school because it interferes with the contract clause of the Constitution. Court adjourned. Mr. McCulloch. I, James McCulloch, the representative of the Second Bank of the U.S., will refuse to pay the tax that Maryland imposes. And in the Constitution, there's a supremacy clause which states that the, national, uh, the state government has no right to tax the national government. Maryland? The name is James. John James. I believe that the federal government should pay the taxes because we only indirectly impose taxes on all notes that weren't chartered by Maryland. Also, the National Bank is not constitutional because it said it nowhere in the Constitution. Here's my verdict. On the transcript of the record of the Court of Appeals by the State of Maryland, and was argued by the Council, on consideration whereof it is the opinion of the Court that the act of the Legislature of Maryland is contrary to the Constitution of the United States and void. Also, the National Bank is constitutional 
because even though it wasn't directly stated, it was implied in the Constitution. Court adjourned.